intro was easy. <laughs> <laughs> dum, 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 dum. The mood and the vibe of the album, it, it takes you on a journey. And it ended up being quite slow and a bit, I don't know, it didn't really work. I'm going to learn to write some happy songs. I've been going through my Valdunican albums and he seemed quite upbeat. Being in the Negative is one of my titles. I'm not very good with lyrics, but I, I do uh, I do like occasionally come up with titles and then Mark has to sort of put his own spin on it. The lyrics behind that really are about people who are a pain in the arse, so you just want to rid of them out of your life and you just think, yeah, you're just feeding the negative. Feeding the negative come from uh, some counselling that I was having for a uh, family bereavement, which hit me pretty hard. And uh, I remember um, while doing some of the counselling, one of the terms was negative thinking and how if you sort of push your, um, your own negative thoughts into something, so in other words, you sort of feed in negative thoughts and I, I kind of really like that because it was true is what you're doing is, is you're sending yourself into a, like a downward spiral so you're feeding the negative aspect of your life so you're feeding the negative and I just really kind of like that title I thought it was really strong and I didn't know what to write about but I just really liked the title. The lyrics for it were inspired by an interview Tony Iommi had on Hard Talk where they were still going on about that Black Sabbath satanic and do they corrupt people and it's like there's still this kind of kind of attitude in like and probably mainstream media that everybody in, in rock and heavy metal is some kind of devil worshipper and it's a bad influence and you know it's somebody to blame and it's been an age old thing that's gone on you know I'm, I'm going over all the ground here but that's basically what the lyrics was about it struck me again it's like god it's still here is that I remember uh, me and Mark went out for a couple of beers once and we were talking about possible titles and lyrics and ideas for a new album and um, Mark had this uh, lyric, I'm the Venom and I had this lyric, I didn't know what to do with it I'm the one that wants you dead and I thought it was a pretty cool title for a song and Mark said, nah Unfortunately in life you come across a lot of people that you don't like and they might not like you but in situations that it's basically the same kind of, it's like an angry song, angry is lyrics and it's not really directed at one person at all, it's, everybody has days where they feel like that. But so basically I'd say it's sort of like, lyrically, it's probably like feeling the negative part two. I like Welcome to My War. That's another song about things that people have to go through, personal things, personal ups, downs. Everybody's got a war of some description going on. Sometimes it's a real war, but you know everybody has internal things and problems, and that's basically us. the lyrics are about that. We came in and we didn't have the song. And we sort of said, right, do you want to sort of perhaps get some riff ideas down? So we started the recorder going and the room, and I think we in about an hour and a half we'd have the music completely finished for it, which is weird, it never happened, it just come out of nowhere, it come out of the four of us just working together, and I think if you've got a good band that is on the same page, things like that can happen. Speaking of God is really about, um, do you have a God? It doesn't have to be the uh, preordained God that people are given, it can be, it can be anything. If you're a God, eh? That might be a god, is the garden or Percy Thor. So you can take them lyrics any way you like. People with more of an open mind probably realise you can make more of a statement out of some of the lyrics on the album, but uh, yeah, it's having a dig at basically what controls the lives of many of us on a daily basis, so and it's always worth poking a stick at the beast now and again. The music was a bit of a fight with the band because I don't think they were convinced at first because of all the different changes. So we worked hard, quite hard on that one and some of it did come together in the end at the studio and I think when we did finish it, it was one because sometimes that happens. Some songs you go in, they're written in no time and they sound exactly like that when you record them. Others come together in the studio with everybody pooling their ideas in and 
Speechy God came that and he said, I really like that song and I fought hard to keep it because I think it's a strong track. The album title, The Blacklist, is it Mark that came up with that, I think? Because we have a song called The Devil's Blacklist, and we sort of thought well, that's a cool title, but I don't know, it, just, it didn't quite sort of gel properly, and then The Blacklist came out and sort of, yeah, be. I've actually got a book upstairs, an old sort of book that someone gave to me, and it's got a slate cover, and I always liked that idea, well, that's really cool. And, um, and it just seemed to, I think someone at some stage, I mean Scott mentioned the idea of parchment on the inside and I thought, aha, slate cover, parchment on the inside. So um, yeah, it kind of suggested itself and uh, the gargoyles sort of came, it, it just, it, again, like the music, it fell into place um, really quite easily. So deceptively easily and uh, we did the, we did that thing of pulling faces at the camera and the idea was that the pictures inside we were going to do them like they were gargoyles but that didn't really work so they are done as sketches based on photographs of, of us pulling silly faces at the camera but it's all I don't know I, I'm really pleased with it I, I sort of made the artwork up and everyone seemed to like it and, and uh, it's got a the, the album for me has a real identity and the name The Blacklist fits with that and the vibe of this artwork and the vibe throughout the album. So really, really happy. Well, right, you know, A to B, really. Well, A to Z, tradition, isn't it? Yeah. I do know my alphabet. I'm an author, you know. <laughs> I don't think we've done an extremely good album. It's got a good feel to it. And, uh, yeah, there's a couple of surprises on there for people. They can be personal things in the lyrics, but they tend to be better on the situation. I try to write lyrics that that anybody can sort of sit there and think, oh yeah, I know what he means about that. I can I can put that to what I'm going through or what I've been through. Or so I try to write for everybody. It's not a lot of some. There is some personal thing, there, but it's well hidden. Yeah. That's basically about the human race. That we're all on a blacklist. There's all the devil's blacklist. We're on. I'm kind of blacklist, we're all you know, lined up to be sacrificed, exterminated, I don't know, are we? The riff is very sort of 70s, sort of doomy stoner rock stuff. Um, it's not trying to be Black Sabbath, it's not trying to be that kind of era, but, you know, I wanted to try and write something like that, that had that kind of real slow, groove, doomy kind of feel to it. In a way, Icon does feel on the outside of a lot of the, the trends and the the ass kissing groups and everything that seems to dominate a lot of music scenes. Icon does its own thing, plows its own furrow, so it's a bit like being blacklisted. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong Way Bike, which was originally called Welcome to My War, which caused mass confusion when we were writing and recording it. The music's been around again a long time for that, along with sort of Speechy God and Grinding Wheel. They were the three that kind of sat on the fence didn't really do a lot until we actually come to, to do the album. Um, Mark's lyrics, but again, what I like about the song is the variation in the riffs. You know, you've got that sort of strong, groovy beginning, and then it opens out into all these other ideas. And again, it's a matter of throwing everything into the pot, and it's the rest of the band that makes it sound like it does. But yeah, I'm really pleased with how that turned out. I really like a sort of solid groove at the beginning. For me, what, what I like about all of the tracks. Uh, from a drummer's perspective, it's very natural. Um, producer Pete, he he gets that heavy metal bands. Um, it's it's a live experience more than anything else, <clears throat> and a lot of I think a lot of modern metal bands do that thing where it's all computer generated, computer enhanced, computer you know mathematically precise, and that's not rock and roll. It's not heavy metal to me. Just on the idea of uh, you know the thunder and the, and the wind on the internet came, and the idea of the, the song title uh, "Man of the North," uh, basically about me, basically stood on the on the moors, the Pennine moors above Burnley in Lancashire, and it's pretty grim. It's just got tons of atmosphere, and we were 
I can't remember exactly how it came about. I think Scott was dicking around with this riff. And it just had this, there's a, if you've ever been to the north of England, um, speaking as a foreigner, in the winter, it's got this bleak kind of majesty to it. It's very Game of Thrones, you know, very sort of Sean Bean with his big sheepskin and a sword sort of vibe. And um, and these fellas are all northerners, you know. So it's it's like, it's it's who who you are. There's a very strong identity to the place. And I thought Man of the North, even the, the, the title suggested itself, it just has that feel, you know, the, the, the bleak majesty of the moors and all that kind of stuff. And there's not a lot to it, but it's just got a ton of, for me, got a ton of emotion in it, and I, I, I'm I'm probably most pleased about that track above all of them. And yeah, I'm yeah, you know, pleased with the whole album, but it's just something about that I, I really, really, really like. That's just basically about it. I'm not a fan of religion, and I think it, it's not the religion that's the problem. It's the people that run it that's the problem, and they use it to hide behind and they use. It's a brainwash people and blah blah blah, you know, another argument that's gone on for years and years and years and that's just my opinion but if whatever works for somebody works and I'm just expressing my opinion, I'm not saying I'm right. Somebody might believe in God or believe in something, it might work, they might have a great life, good, good for them, it's, you know, people are free to believe what they want. The one, actually, when uh, people have heard it, when we've done it at gigs recently, have said that um, it reminded them of the first album with its sort of pace and its punch and the kind of riff feel, which is good, because we've tried hard to sort of keep what we consider like that icon sort of sound and groove, but we have worked hard to push forward. I used that title as um, so everything that's going on, everybody's like, mass hysteria and screaming and we're all drowning our way and going under and because we did a demo of it which was like one run through with this rough idea i remember it was in the rehearsal room nobody could think of anything and we finally come up with this riff pushing the riff along to try and get it done and we did one sort of very wobbly out of time demo and gave it to mark and said to even do anything with that and he contacted me saying look well this is this the demo shit it's just got a good feel and a good you know, the vocals on that, I think, are fantastic. You know, say so he came up with him basically off the top of his head in the studio. It was, it was a half-written song, and you know, for the album closer, closer. I think it actually makes you want to just press start again. Icon's obviously got an album out before, um, which I think is is an excellent album, uh, Newborn Lie. I've always liked that since I first heard it. And this, it's been quite a long time, and a lot of transition has, has gone down, so this, this almost feels like a new beginning. And that's no disrespect to what's gone before, because that still forms a core of what we do, and it's, it's shaped the icon sound. So this is album number two, which kind of feels for this lineup like album number one. So we're all kind of looking forward to the next chapter, really. Um, once we play this stuff in live and, and all that, there's already riff ideas floating around and lyric ideas, and. I just want to get the get the steam roller rolling, really. So uh, that's it. Yeah.